everyone, it's Ross, and today's video we're doing part two of the spring fig tour. Uh, we did part one yesterday, so if you missed that, go back. We still have a lot to show you guys, and if I didn't break this up into multiple parts, it would have been a huge video file. The battery had ran out on us, but uh, we're back. So I wanna show you guys more of what's going on in the patio, and then we're gonna get actually back in the greenhouse and show you guys the greenhouse. We also have a lot of figs we planted over here and a lot of figs we planted actually over here. So stay tuned guys. Um, what I do wanna show you right here actually is my Martinenka Ramada. And you can see the nice little variegated wood. It's very rare that I show you guys a, a variegated fig. You can see the variegated branches there. It's actually forming main crop right now with the help of the greenhouse. This tree has yet to fruit for me once and I've had it for a long time. Um, there's actually a bit of discrepancy and a bit of uh, worrying that this variety is not true to type. There's been a huge, you know, um, mix up and just through bad selling practices and really carelessness and, um, you know, there's been a lot of fakes that have been spread around the community. And a lot of the Martinenka Ramadas have turned out to be just panache. So this one, as I was told, was confirmed to be Martinenka Ramada, but I want to fruit it for myself to be absolutely sure. It seems like when these fruit, these varieties here are so vigorous as this tree has been for years, it finally has slowed down the vigor and as a result, it's now putting down, putting out fruit. So I think it's really important that, you know, some of these trees just really slow down the vigor on some of them if you can help it and that'll really help them fruit. So we'll get to see if this one is indeed the real thing. If not, if it is panache, panache we are going to graft onto this because panache is just it's a good fig but it's nothing really that special and um martinica ramada should be way tastier and actually um should maybe even be a better fig for my climate um we also have down in here one of my younger italian 258s if you guys know zuni who does videos also on youtube about figs she's got a pretty decent collection herself and this was a tree that she brought to the Long Island Fig Festival last year, and she put it up for charity, and I bought it for charity, and we have ourselves another Italian 258, which is really cool, but I think what's happening here is that this tree may not actually fruit for me this year, which is a bit disappointing, uh, but this is a big difference in a way between Black Madeira and Italian 258 is that Italian 258 is just a little bit less you know, it's more reluctant to fruit than Black Madeira. Black Madeira just loves to put out fruits, but the fruit quality is very similar. The flavor is very similar. Um, I'm just happy to have another Italian 258 in my collection. We also have here something that I'm really fond of is a Vila de Bordeaux type. This is called Valle Calda, and you can see there's a Breba here. Two really nice Brebas over here. So on this young tree that we had just grafted last year, you can see the graft down in here onto this nice rootstock. You can see all these roots actually above the soil, which I'm not entirely sure if this is a good thing or a bad thing just yet, but um, this thing has grown pretty vigorously last year. Didn't fruit. It was a young graft, a young tree, but now it's actually putting out three Breva, which is good to see. And uh, it's gonna put out a lot of main crop for really not getting much of a head start at all. So. Really excited for this because I love my Vila de Bordeaux's. Just like I love my Italian 258's. You can see right in here, this is another Vila de Bordeaux type called Petit Albic. We've had this one for years. This is one of the oldest trees I have. I think this one's at least four or five years old, if I'm not mistaken. And we, uh, it's got four Breba on it, even after pruning it back quite heavily. If I don't prune this thing, which I, I may not do this upcoming year, but this is one of my favorite varieties, Vila de Bordeaux. I'm sure there's very small differences between Petit Albique here and the Valle Calda. I'm sure they exist, right? But you can definitely see a similar leaf pattern, a similar shape to the Brebas, a similar color to the Brebas. Even the leaf stems here are of a certain pinkish reddish hue to them. The red petioles, they're very, very similar varieties, but I would be willing to bet 100% there's also some really minor adaptations between them that may make one of them just a better bet here in my climate. Maybe the fruit quality is also slightly different, 
But overall, I love Villette de Bordeaux. It is gonna be a classic forever. It is one of the best varieties in existence without a doubt. And because it's so commonly found, it doesn't get really talked about all that much. But at one point, Villette de Bordeaux was rare. And it's now really widespread and for good reason. It's an incredible fig. It really performs super well. And I have many varieties of this in different forms. I think I have at least four or five Villa de Bordeaux trees in the collection here, whether in ground or in pots, they do so well. Uh, we also have another tree down here called Nalaga. This is a tree that my buddy Wills is actually really liking in Florida. And similar to Villa de Bordeaux, it should have really good rain resistance. Um, I don't know how early this one is, but I've already pinched it, believe it or not, because it put out such really strong, vigorous growth in a direction that I didn't really want it to, uh, to grow in. I'd much rather keep this branch here and then this branch here. As you can see, we've got the nice Y structure here. And then you got this branch just going off in the weirdest way. So we pinched this to hopefully stop the growth, but also ensure we're getting very early fruits off of that variety. We'll get a nice taste. We'll see what the big deal is. This is Baccarinho behind it. And Baccarinho is supposed to be an early variety in Portugal. I think it's pretty similar to like an Adriatic type, but we'll see, we'll find out. Um, we'll see if there's any differences, but we are gonna get a nice crop off of this. And I think it was actually putting out a few Braba, a number of Braba, but I took them off. I actually pruned the tree back a little bit further than I would have liked, but it was too tall. And as a result, we lost those Braba, but um, you know, it's getting a nice form now. And it's also getting to the point where I'm almost certain if I get close in here, it's tough to see while I'm holding the camera for you guys, but I think I can pinch that now. Um, what else do I have to show you guys that's interesting? Here's my Smith. And this is another fig that we're going crazy with, propagating it. We air layered off four branches, four trees off of this Smith tree last year and we turned them into our production trees that we had along the wall here that I showed you guys on these uh, these five gallon size pots we have a number of Smith trees one in the ground we also have another fig called Texas BA1 which is very similar to Smith in the ground we'll show you guys that in a minute but here's a Smith air layer right here another Smith air layer and another Smith air layer we sold one and kept three and then also, I think we have even more of them because we bought some from Just Fruits and Exotics. Here's one right here. Uh, here's another one. And uh, we planted one of them that we got from Just Fruits and Exotics in the ground. So overall, I have a ton of Smith trees and for good reason. It is undoubtedly so far the best variety in my climate, but it's not very hardy. Um, so here's what the tree looks like after taking off all these all these uh, limbs, it's now putting out some nice strong growth in different points on the tree. It's making a nice comeback even down here towards the lower part of the tree. I want to induce a nice branching structure on this if we can from really here, but also from here. But on this branch, we're only getting one new limb. So I got to come back in back in here and get new limbs to form down lower. But Overall, it should be an exciting, um, exciting year for even just this tree after we just chopped it back. But it is getting a much less head start than all the other varieties. I would say Petit Albique is a bit behind. Um, this is Verdino del Nord, which is getting a bit behind. Um, compared to some other things here like Rasti's Persian Unknown, compared to some other things like Hate of the Argentile and Dien Menel that we showed you guys, it's just a bit far behind. I think Rasty's though is going to be a nice little producer for me this year. It's very young. It's on a Celeste rootstock. And you can see the graft union here. Um, it didn't really grow all that much last year. This is actually, I think it's third year that I've had it. And I, it was riddled with scale. So you got to really watch out for scale, but it's now finally taking off. The tree looks very clean, very healthy. Oh, this is a very early honey fig. I'm talking real early. So we should get some decent fruits off of that. Another tree that's a bit far behind is my Detrace's Splace. And we took a lot of cuttings off of this. We rooted it. We got one that's actually in the ground over here. This is my um, Sunbird Unknown. This is a 
English brown turkey and it's grafted onto Olympian, another English brown turkey. And you can see here, here's another limb here of Olympian, but we decided I hate the tissue cultures. I don't think Olympian performs well in my climate. Really, the English brown turkeys don't in general, even though you see a nice Braba here, which it can produce pretty good amounts of Braba. It's just not a variety that I want. And I don't want many English brown turkeys. They just attract a lot of SWD. They don't handle the rain very well. And they also ripen a bit later than I would like. So uh, we found a better version of Olympian here in the form of Sunbird, and we'll keep this for as long as we can. But inevitably, I think I'm getting rid of any English brown turkey I have. So we've grafted numerous varieties onto Olympian, and Olympian's now gone. Um, this here is Chater Green. We grafted this last year. Here's another fig called Rocca Nera for those, or for Joe, if you're watching out there, buddy. This is the tree that you sent me last year. And uh, it had a second limb over here. I cut that out, and now it's forming a nice tree structure here. Um, and actually, I think it wants to put out Braba, if I'm not mistaken. So this one's a bit far farther behind this year, but I have no doubts because of how much this tree grew last year. Yeah, it looks like it's actually putting out a Braba right back there. But I have no doubts this one's actually going to fruit for me this year. Uh, really excited to taste that one, Joe, if you're watching right now. We've also got in this, this little pot here a mixture of figs. Albo, yellow and long neck. And then here was the rootstock, Gros Monstrus de Lipari. And a pretty good review came out by my buddy Rom on Gros Monstrus. And I had pretty much fruited Gros Monstrus uh, a couple years ago, and it didn't really do well here. It just was succumbed to too much water. It's such a big fig, and I don't think it really liked the amount of water that it gets here in my climate. So I got rid of it. But Rom had put out a really nice review of it on our figs, and now it's growing again. I let it grow this time because the the graft union here of Albo, I think this is Albo, yep, and the yellow long neck up here, they're not too far away from the roots, the uh, the rootstock here. So what I'm trying to say is that the tree isn't too big, suppressing all the growth from down below. So the rootstock put out a nice limb for me. And I said, you know what, let's keep it. Let's see what happens with it. Yellow long neck and um, albo are both very large, big honey figs, very early too. And I have a feeling they're very similar, but we'll see. There's a big debate with all these big honey figs out there, like Golden Riverside and Golden Rainbow and Long Yellow and Yellow Long Neck. Who really knows? Um, okay, let's bring you guys around the other side here. This is my Daloso. We have another Daloso in the ground we showed you guys in part one. This one's in a pot. We grafted this. It took off really well. I have a feeling this is pretty similar to Moro de Caneva, Norino, even Fico Secco. Uh, just some uh, it's other Italian varieties. We'll see. This is Marala MP, and Marala just drops figs for me. I'm not even sure if it's common. Uh, reading Ponza's report on this one, it doesn't seem very promising. So we're using it as rootstock. We grafted three other Italian varieties, I think, onto it. Verdino Nord that we really like. Here's um, one from Montebiolo and Pecciolo Bianco, which really should be way better than uh, Marala. Here we have uh, Spei, and what we need to do is actually move this tree in a better location because it's growing into the other tree. It's very difficult to uh, tell where this is, but this is Spei here. And all these helicopters, man, from the maple trees are making a mess all over the patio, all over the pots, covering some of these leaves. We have Coldenom Mutante down here. This is a uh, love, but from Aaron in California. Who knows if it's the real thing or even if it's common. Um, here we have a, cap a Franken fig of three different Italian varieties, Leopoldo Abruzzo, Pendolino Rosso. We had Bazone Nero on this tree, but it broke off, unfortunately. The graft broke off. And then this one is Verdone. So, really excited to try these if they will ripen. Who knows if uh, some of them are even common. Leopoldo may not be. 
but I know Verdone is and so is um, Pendolino, so we'll see. Uh, here we have Fico Gentile, which has actually taken off pretty well for being um, for not getting any head start in the greenhouse. This thing's taken off. And this is the Fico Gentile that's not the Dotato type. This is the tree that has a blood red interior on the fig, and it's really, really good. It's like the European version of it. Um, and then we have right next to it in the same pot, things like Borges Soak Grease. This is Rosalino here, an Italian variety that's quite popular. I bet the fruit quality is probably not that good on that one, but we'll see. Gallo here, proven winner actually in the ground, but it's a smaller fig that planetfig.com had covered and did a lot of research and put a lot of time into cultivating this variety. And uh, I was pretty convinced and I wanted to get it. Um, this one's Negra de Age. This one could replace my Col de Doms, and uh, that's the goal, is to find myself a replacement that's earlier, has very few acnes, like the Col de Doms, a similar flavor, but beats it out in terms of production and earliness, and Negra de Age could be that tree. Same thing with my White Triana. White Triana, I think, is very similar to my Col de Doms. It'll be nice to get a side-by-side -side this year, but we'll see. Um, we're also planting a white triana in the ground. And another fig that I hope will replace the cold and alms inevitably is sucrete. And it's, it's a French fig, it means sugar, I believe, in France. And it's actually got a Breva right here, which is pretty cool to see. It really took off this year. It's putting out lots of fruit right now. Um, so we should get a nice early crop, but this one struggled with the rain, and that's something cold knobs do pretty well with, is the rain. Um, so, you know, even if it's a bit earlier, which I know Sucret probably is, it needs to be able to handle the rain, and, um, White Triana does, Negra DH does, I think. So, Sucret, which also has low acnes, it has that really nice texture to the fig. What do I mean by the texture? is that it really forms a nice jammy, gooey, thick, jammy center of the fig. And um, all those acnes are the female parts of the fig, which then inevitably lead to a seed. And if they have less seeds, they have less acnes. And in my opinion, they are much better figs, uh, especially to my palate. Here we have uh, another one called Fico Nita. This is like a black mission type, but it's quite different and you can see it's fruiting really early this one triggered itself in the greenhouse really with very little help and it's fruiting it's growing it's doing really well i didn't like the fig too much last year but we're giving it a second shot we have my cold Dom noir right here all the cold Doms, man are so so good we pinched the tips off of this it's just getting too big and um I hope that this one's going to fruit very soon here for me because I really would like to have as many cold adams as possible in August. It's just an unbelievable piece of fruit. So let's take you guys around to the greenhouse now and show you guys some of these in-ground trees as well. Here we have some of the stone fruits. You can see these little plums on the trees. Really small plums. We also have apricots over here somewhere. Here's a nice little apricot. Um, looks like this tree, something's going on right there, but we'll have to look at that some other time. The strawberries are fruiting really well. This is the early glow June bearing crop. There's the raspberries, new ones we just planted. And then amongst all the raspberries and blackberries is figs and rows of them that we're putting in two feet apart. Similar to the first bed you guys saw in the first video, we still have a, a number of varieties to put in here. So I'm kind of killing the grass with these bags. The grass is gonna die anyway. But you can definitely see this in here and it looks good. Um, I really like the way it came out with the rocks. And then you have the bare soil here that's acting as a nice thermal mass. And then we're killing the grass over here with cardboard and straw. We're also going to come in here and hopefully get a nice load of wood chips. And we're going to put down some wood chips on the top of this. 
and also fill in this area over here with the grass help uh, put wood chips down on top of these young persimmon trees here but that's the goal this is simon unknown number one simon if you're watching this is a really young rooted cutting i got it's not doing too hot but it's gonna pull through i have i have faith and you can see down in here it's hanging in and um there you go dude that's awesome so we'll see how well that one does in the ground here We've also got, uh, what is this down in here? Uh-oh, where's the tag? I have to look around for the tag on this one. Oh, this is Vertolino. Um, I know that for a fact. I saw the tag actually yesterday, but I don't know where the tag's at, so we'll have to look for it when we're done this video. This is Campanieri. We just stuck a cutting in the ground, and this is what it looks like. How incredible is that? That's, all, that's amazing. So you can root these things in the ground with no issue. You just gotta make sure that the cutting's fresh, you're putting the parafilm down, the temperatures are right, it's early in the season, you don't wanna do this too late. Now on this side, we've got Black Celeste, which is also a really small rooted cutting. We have Tarama Unknown that's putting out Brava. This was an air layer we took off the tree as a backup. I'll show you guys the other Tarama that hasn't actually leafed out yet, so it could be dead. We had that one in a one foot high raised bed. There we have Floria. This is Demos Family Unknown. This is Gayette. Uh, Dalmati type, supposed to be very hardy. We have Pastelliere, Pastelliere, that's also rooting. Rooting from cutting. These are all from different sources of Pastelliere to see if I can get a different strain that might perform better here and not drop figs. Here we have Sicilian Black. Uh, really workhorse hardy Chicago type and if I bring you guys over to the greenhouse open this up it's just going nuts in here there's not even that many trees in here but the uh, the green canopies are like just <laughs> just covering the whole area it's really nice to see how everything's growing and fruiting um, everything in here actually it's pretty far along and I didn't really need to keep these guys in here, but they're in here. And um, I guess what I could have done was taken all these guys out and put in some of the um, the trees we took out of underneath the sunroom and switch them and put those in here and get them to a head start and put these guys on the patio. But I don't know, it's not really that worth it to me, I guess, to move all these things around. Um, you know, it's not really a necessity. We have things like Ponte Tresa which believe it or not are fruiting for me. That's really cool to see for the first time. Socorro Black grafted onto that brown turkey rootstock we had years ago. We had Smith on this, we air layered Smith off. Here's our Italian 258, which looks incredible. It's got a nice little form down in here and it's got a huge canopy. It's putting out fruit right now. Look at that, there's a little fruit right there on Italian 258. We pinched this branch right next to it. The whole thing should be fruiting very soon. Here we have Mega Celeste putting out figs. Um, there's just so many things going on in here. It's tough to even tell. Coldenon Blanca Negra, which has two Brava on it. That's pretty cool. They may drop, who knows. Here we have Galicia Negra. Alicia Negra is actually fruiting as well. We just pinched this. So all these trees in here, believe it or not, every single tree is fruiting or will be fruiting very soon. Um, we have Cavalieri down in here, which is also putting out little figlets. That's freaking awesome to see. One of my favorite figs, but it's so late and it splits very easily. So if we can get this guy fruiting this early, oh man, it's gonna be incredible. Um, I have two of those, by the way, two Cavalieri trees. Here's another one right here. I think, uh, what is this one? This is black Portuguese, like a black Madeira type fig, similar to Preto. And this one's gonna be fruiting for me very soon as well. It's only got really one limb though, which is a bit sad to see, but it's finally taken off this year, it looks like. And then right behind it is another Cavalieri which also is fruiting, which is showing much more vigor than the uh, the mother plant in a 10 gallon. So who knows, we also have his mirror back in here, 
Um, this little guy here is his mirror and it's taken a while for him to get going. I think this tree for whatever reason took a big beating in the greenhouse this year even though Mega Celeste is putting out figlets for me. It just is taking a while for that one to get going. Um, we also have Zephyro somewhere in here as well as some of the GM figs like GM 1 you know 49A 172 here's a whole cat like you know whole Franken fig of them we have back in there things like Coldenom Grease which are fruiting Martinenka not Ramada but just the regular Martinenka with like four Brabas on it um, just unbelievable production in here really great to see that all these trees are going just absolutely insane putting out tons of fruit I can't even get back in here guys um, but I think those are really the main winners that I wanted to show you is Coldenom Grease, Insane, Italian 258, Ponte Tresa. All these guys are going to get their time if they uh, turn out to be something real special, which a lot of them sort of already are to me. There's the outside. I wanted to see if I can get a nice view. Um, Let's take you guys around to the last part of the fig tour. And again, we just planted a lot of these trees in the ground. We did a whole section on it, whole video, numerous videos. If you guys want to go back and watch them, highly recommend it. We have Just Fruits and Exotics, Black Madeira Knot right in here. This is Little Ruby. Little Ruby didn't make it through the winter, but it is re-sprouting down here from the base. so. It'll be back. We have Ron de Bordeaux, which didn't survive the winter, but it should be re-sprouting at some point here, any day. I'm really surprised it hasn't. But I'm trying to move away too many layers of these rocks, because too many layers actually cools down the soil. So I just want one thick, thin layer, actually, of rocks on top of the soil. We'll have to fix that at some point here. Here's Sultane. Freshly planted tree uh, it's grown actually almost double its size since we've planted it. <laughs> really small tree, but it'll be good to see this one in the ground. Same thing with Texas BA1. That's a very similar fig to Smith, and you can even tell by the leaves. See the leaves here? Very similar to Smith. Here we have Sobon Blue Green, which I think is very similar to Balone. We're going to plant this one as soon as Balone is ready to be planted because we're putting them both in the same hole. Here we have LSU Huye. It looks pretty good. And it had a Brava on it, but I think it dropped it. Um, but hey, it's doing really well. I mean, some of these trees look way better than others. And I think it has a lot to do with um, the soil temperatures. We also have White Marseille from Edible Landscaping and White Marseille, I don't really, I'm not, I'm not really the biggest fan of this, but it survived the winter and I said, you know what, let's keep it. Here's Taramo that was in the raised bed. We dug it up and planted it right next to where it was, which was like right in here. And uh, I think it's gonna have to re-sprout from the roots and we'll see if it does that. If not, it's not the end of the world because we have a backup. Here we have, um, Brianzola Rosa, which I think is probably very similar, if not the same, as a Firo. We'll find out, but showing a lot of similar characteristics and visual appearance. Here we have a uh, Barbalone, which is actually a black version of White Marseille. It's got black skin. Very interesting fig. Nice little adaptation. They believe it was White Marseille and somehow it mutated and has a black skin. And then next to that is Lampira, Lampira 1, not Lampira Preta. We have uh, Norino, a.k.a. Moro di Caneva. This down in here is Figujan, very early French fig, first year with it. As early as Ronde Bordeaux. I don't know how hardy it's going to be. This is Campaneri right in there. We also have another Moro de Caneva. We're gonna be planting actually Fico Seco back in here, which I think is also Moro de Caneva. This is Green Michurinska, a very early and hardy variety from Bulgaria. 
And then this over here right next to it is Long to Do. Long August, very classic, well-grown fig. Very hardy, early, rain resistant, has got everything. Um, should have many copies of that one if you're serious about fruit production. Here we have Azores Dark, and we chopped this one all the way back to the base. So we took off two air layers, we took every cutting we could, and uh, it hasn't leafed out yet. So very surprising, because the heat here should be enough to wake this thing up, but it hasn't been awakened yet. And I'm sure it will leaf out very soon. I think this may be a point right here in which it does. We have LSU Champagne right over here. This here is, uh, I think this is my Campanieri. This is a more mature Campanieri. I have about five or six Campanieris in the ground. Here is Stallion, AKA Blue Celeste. You can already tell that it's got the Blue Celeste leaf structure on it. Young plant, but very tasty. We also have Negretta right here. This one was um, introduced from Italy about 10 years ago. Really nice wild fig in Italy. It does actually really well here in the ground. Kind of insane how well it does. Um, and we still have more spots to fill in here. We got a spot here and then some along the, uh, the house we still have to fill in. So we've got a number of trees left to plant. So we've got one here about maybe five or six or seven against the house. And um, we can definitely fill in back more where we were on the greenhouse. And then there's three in the other bed. Um, actually over here, that was more experimental. We have three that can go in there. So still plenty of room to plant figs and we still have more that are hardening off that we brought outside or maybe are still rooting outside. Very excited to get all this stuff growing. You're not gonna believe how big some of these in-ground trees are at the end of this year. It's gonna be insane, I think. And hopefully I can get a lot of fruit off of some of them. Even though they're very young, I want them to fruit because I want the vigor to slow down. I don't want them to get too big. I want the vigor to slow down so that they can lignify in time for the frosts that come in, uh, in November and December. So that's the tour, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. You got this far, I definitely appreciate it. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Post all kinds of different content over there. Also check out the blog. We have a few new blog posts there, rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog. All that stuff, all the links to all that is in the description. But yeah, I want to th just thank you guys. This was a nice little preview into what to expect in the fig orchard this year and what kind of varieties I have and what um, my trees look like so you guys can sort of compare to yourself although I wouldn't compare too hard because I've had a really great season and this can be a bit discouraging seeing somebody with really mature trees showing off what they have <laughs> so um, you know this stuff will come for you guys don't don't uh, don't worry about it too much and be patient you know your trees are gonna get old no matter what you do so um, Usually by that third year, you're gonna get pretty good production. In the fourth and fifth year, you're gonna have a really mature tree that you can honestly say is, um, you know, job well done. You know, give yourself a nice pat on the back. So, all right guys, thank you so much for watching this one. I'm super excited for the amount of fruits I'm gonna get this year. And we will catch you all soon. All right, take care guys. See you for tomorrow's video.